So that's what we're going to cover. I'll try and uh, be on time. We'll see. And as yesterday, do please comment, ask questions, whatever. Tell me to go faster, slower, you name it. Right, so what are the sources of health state values? And just to be absolutely, well, I hope explicit as to what a health state value is. A health state is simply a description of somebody's health. And the health state value is a number we want to attach to being in that health state. And this number is going to indicate relatively how good or how bad that health, being in that health state is. There are two um, sources of health state values. There's generic measures and there's condition specific uh, health states. The generic measures uh, include such things as the EQ5D I've just mentioned. You might sometimes come across the SF6D. The SF stands for short form. Uh, the 6D is six dimensions. What you may have come across is the SF36. Now the SF36 is a short form 36. Uh, it's a 36 item, it's not very short, a uh, 36 item measure. It's not a preference-based measure. A SF36 score is derived by simply adding up the scores you get on each item. And each item is given an equal weight. So there's no preferences in it at all. SF6D utilizes a subset of the SF36 data and weights the different items based on people's preferences. You've probably never come across the 15D, um, 15 dimensions. It's a somewhat unwieldy measure developed in Finland and largely used in Finland. Uh, we won't go any further into it. Another measure is the AQUAL or the uh, Assessment of Quality of Life. This is an Australian measure. I'll touch on it briefly. There's also the Health Utilities Index, which is the abbreviated to the HUI, Health Utilities Index, which is a Canadian measure. And not to be left out, um, there's a US measure, the Quality of Wellbeing Scale, QWB. Uh, and really, for adults, that is the population of such measures, generic preference-based measures. Now, the alternative to using a generic measure is to use condition-specific data. Uh, so to use condition-specific health state descriptions and to value those um, condition-specific health states. And you could value them directly by using such measures as a standard gamble, which I won't have time to explain, or more likely the time trade-off, which I will be explaining. Or instead of valuing these condition-specific descriptions directly, you could value them indirectly, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, by mapping. So you could look at the relationship between a condition-specific uh, health state and the generic health states, such as EQ5D. In both cases, whether we're using condition-specific or we're using generic descriptions, to start with, in both cases, the health-related quality of life, as it's called, uh, is based on individual's preferences and is expressed in such a way that it's on a scale from zero to one. Or should I say more accurately, on a scale that has a zero and a one, and one being the top of the scale um, some notion of full health, you cannot get better than one, and zero being conventionally the value we assign to being dead. Now, I'm being very careful in saying these are two points on the scale because there is a possibility that you could be in a health state that's worse than dead. So it could be worse than zero. Uh, and I'll touch on this later on. Interestingly, not very common in Japan. And I don't know the reason why, it might be a cultural one, 
but we'll, we'll come back to that. But most health states are somewhere between zero and one. But there is this possibility of having a health state that attracts a negative score. You listed those five or so scales and you mentioned the country from mm. which or where they were developed. Is it because you assume or people assume that those value judgments are different from country to country? Um, yes, we do, but that's not the reason we have um, different measures. The difference between the measures is what dimensions you're including. Now, that might differ between countries. The thing that really, almost for sure, we have evidence differs between countries is if we take a particular measure, such as EQ5D, and look at how it's valued in one country or another country, there's differences. And we'll, we'll touch on this um, later. But for example, the EQ5D is definitely valued differently in Japan from in England. Um, interestingly, I had a, well, I'll come back to it later on when we look at uh, some of these country sets. So I think quite possibly the dimensions that are important will differ across countries, but we don't have much data on that. But the scores, or sometimes called the value set, the numbers attaching to different health states the same description of the health state, but the score will differ across countries. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we've got measures developed in, well, Europe, US, Canada, Finland, Australia, that's more to do with academic factors, um, I think, than anything else. <clears throat> Generic qualities, generally speaking, at least by um, health economists, but also by people, decision makers using um, qualities, generic qualities are typically favored over condition specific qualities. And the main reason for this is this issue of comparability. A generic quality, in principle, is a, it's the same thing that's being measured in the different healthcare areas. If instead you had a rheumatoid arthritis quality and a prostate cancer quality and a psoriasis quality, it's not obvious whether they'd be the same thing. And so you'd lose the comparability. Now for economic purposes, the comparability is really important because the main use of, of these sorts of measures is in trying to decide um, on all the competing demands on our budget, which demands should be, as it were, approved or rec recognized, and which should not be accepted. And so we're making comparative judgments about how we spend our money. So hence, generic is important. Proponents of condition-specific qualities would argue that condition-specific qualities are going to be much more sensitive measures of health outcome because they've been designed indeed to be responsive and sensitive. And so are, they would argue, more likely to capture changes in health. And so this debate is ongoing, but the dominant view currently, very much so, is that generic measures are going to be more, prove more useful than condition specific. Okay, for those who prefer, well, it's still words, but it's sort of a graphic. This is a, it's a sketch of what's going on. Everything starts with patients. It's the patients that are telling us what health state they're in. It's the patients that we give the EQ5D or the SF6D questionnaire to, to complete. So down here we have um, these generic measures such as EQ5D. And as we'll see, these can be directly valued using a range of methods, but uh, most, most commonly time trade-off. And you end up with generic health state values. You end up with a set of numbers attaching to the different health state descriptions, and these numbers indicate the relative 
goodness or badness of that health state. Uh, just in passing, there's not many of these yet, but occasionally you'll come across a genetic measure with a, what's called a condition-specific bolt-on. It's the idea that the genetic measure is very useful, but it's maybe lacking some element that's important for a particular condition. And so you might bolt on some additional dimensions. An example of this would be, um, there is, an, um, in the case of psoriasis, the typical genetic measure is thought not to capture everything that's important to the patient. And in particular, for patients with psoriasis, um, itchiness of the condition is thought important and also social stigma attaching to severe cases of psoriasis is thought important. And so an attempt has been made to take those additional dimensions and bolt them on, add them on to the genetic measure. Um, it's, but as I say, this is not very commonly done. It does have a lot of problems associated with it. Um, so I won't be spending a lot of time on that. The alternative is condition-specific measures. And if we're going to start with condition-specific measures, uh, we have two options. We can map them to some generic health state. So map them, for example, to an EQ5D. Or we can directly value the condition-specific measures using such approaches as time trade-off. And we end up with our preference-based condition-specific values. And so we're going to have our condition-specific qualities rather than our generic qualities. And then these are the numbers, these are the measures of health outcome that feed into our cost utility analysis or our economic evaluation.